Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back. If you were here last week, you will have seen that we built our Poxmox server. So that server is now up and running and it's running version 8.1. The next step in my lab and journey is to build an EVNG VM. Whenever I was doing my CCNA or my CCMP, I used to build labs all the time. And it was one thing that really, it just really got the content into my head was actually getting hands on and building things. So today we're gonna download the ISO, we're gonna build the EVNG VM on Proxmox, and then we're gonna upload an image and just make sure it works. If you go to the EVNG website, so it's EVNG.net, uh, I'm just gonna click on download. I'm gonna to go to free, the community edition, and then we're just gonna download the ISO here, so the, the one at the bottom. The next thing we need to do is download the Linux image that we want. I'm gonna download a Kali Linux image, so just click on documentation, then click on how to create images, and then if you just move down to the bottom, you should see something down here for Linux, Linux images. Now the good thing about Linux images on the EVNG is the guys from EVNG have already created a bunch of images, so we just need to download them. I'm going to click on this link, and I am going to download the Kali Linux image. So it is here. The next thing we need to do is upload the EVNG community ISO to Proxmox so then we can use that to create the VM and build EVNG. So I'm gonna click on my storage and click on ISO images and upload and select file and open the ISO and just click upload. Okay so that's done let's just create the VM so click on create VM I'm just gonna call it EVNG I'm gonna go next I'm gonna select the ISO that we've uploaded next next again I'm gonna change this to 160 gig storage next one thing to be aware of the spec of the VM that you need to run a lot of different images with an EVNG you really need a high spec machine to run multiple labs or run lots of things within a lab so for now I am just gonna two sockets and four cores that's gonna be okay for me for now I'm gonna click on next I'm gonna give this machine 64 gig of RAM so that's 65536 I click on next. I'm gonna keep it on this bridged network so that will allow me to communicate with the VM from my home network. I click on next and then finish. Let's click on start and we will start the build process. I'm just gonna select English, then done. I'm gonna leave the network as DHCP. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna make different changes to my network. If you wanna give your machine a static IP, then feel free to make the changes now. But for me, I'm just gonna leave it as DHCP for now. Click done. I don't have a proxy address. Are you sure I wanna continue? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's gonna build the VM. It will reboot a number of times. So the VM is built. I just need to go into hardware and remove the ISO. Okay, and then just go back to console. So whenever the VM reboots, just leave it for a little while. It will eventually bring up a blue screen. So after about 30 minutes or so of the VM being built, it will eventually reboot and it will bring you to a login screen that will ask you to log into EVNG. The default username is root and the password is Eve. Once you log in, it's gonna ask you to enter the root password again and it's going to take you through the EVNG setup so I'm just going to keep all of the defaults so hosting EVNG, DNS is going to leave the same I'm going to leave it as DHCP, NTP, I don't care about that direct connection to the internet is fine next and then it will reboot so that should be it, that should be the VM built so you can see uh, the console screen here tells me that the IP address of EVNG is 192.168.0.220 so let's just test that Get the zero to twenty. So the default username and password here is admin and Eve. So it looks like the the machine itself is built. Let's just go back to Proxmox because I want to show you this warning message that I've got. And the reason I'm getting that is because nested virtualization is not enabled on this VM. So for nested virtualization, that just means you're running virtual things on a virtual machine. So for EVNG, I'll be building switches firewalls and um, probably a number of different VMs so in order to run those virtual environments on a virtual machine you need to have nested virtualization enabled. So there's two things we need to check here. We need to first of all check that nested virtualization is actually enabled on the physical server that I have. 
So I'm just going to click up here to the host. I'm going to open up a shell and I'm going to type in a command. I put these commands in the description below so you can easily find them. But once you have your shell prompt open, I'm just going to paste the command in. And that is actually going to check if nested virtualization is enabled on the host. Um, my server has it enabled, so that's why I can see a Y. If you don't have nested virtualization enabled, then that will show a no. The next thing we need to check is the VM itself. So the VM has to have a particular setting to tell it that it is a machine that will have virtualized things inside it. So it is very easy to do that. So I'm just going to click into my VM that I've just created. I'm going to go down to hardware and then into CPU, so this one, I'm going to click on edit. And what we need to do, we need to change this type, this, this thing in the corner here, we need to change this type to host. I'm just going to highlight that, type host, and then OK. And then I need to go to the server, and I'm just going to give this a quick reboot. We've rebooted, and the warning message has now actually gone. So, so far we have built the EVNG VM and we've confirmed that nested virtualization is actually up and running and it's enabled. The next thing we need to do is test the platform to make sure things actually work. The Linux image that we downloaded from EVNG, we need to upload that to the EVNG VM and then we are going to make some changes to it and fix permissions and then we will actually build that within EVNG and that should really just make sure everything is working. So in order to upload the Linux image to EVNG, we need to use a tool like WinSCP or if you're on a Mac, you can use a tool called Cyberduck. I'm on a Mac, so that's, that's what I'm going to use. So if you open up Cyberduck, we need to open up a new connection. So we're going to change this to SFTP and I'm going to type in the IP address of the server and then the default username and password, which is root and eve, hit connect. I'm just going to say allow and I'm going to click this to go back to the primary directory and then within here we need to upload the image so let me just do that we can opt unit lab we can add-ons and then I'm going to go into this one at the bottom the next thing I'm going to do is just drag the Linux image in there so then it will start uploading to the VM so let's just do that so the upload has completed now we need to make some changes to the actual file itself. So open up a terminal window and we're going to SSH to the VM. So SSH root at 192.168.0.220. I'm going to put in the password. Again, it's Eve. So we need to navigate to a certain folder. I'll link to the Linux uh, image page on EVNG. That way you're always going to get the most up-to-date commands that we need. So we can see the image that we uploaded is there. The next thing we need to do is unzip the file. Press tab to autocomplete. That is done. Let's just check. You can see it's there. We can now remove the Linux image that we actually uploaded to the machine because we don't need both. Okay. The next thing we need to do is fix the permissions for the VM itself. There's a command you can actually run, and again, this is listed on the EVNG website. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. So that's done. That should be it. The next thing we can do is log into EVNG, create a new lab, and then we'll add a Linux image and then just power it on and see if it actually works. So back in EVNG, I am just going to create a new lab. So new lab. test lab and let's see if that and then I'm just going to right click anywhere and click on node and type in Linux so we can see that the Kali Linux image we uploaded is there which is good I'm going to I'm just gonna leave this as default for now I can save let's just start this one let's get started and then we will open it up and see do we get the login prompt and all those details so this is opened. The default username and password according to the EVNG website is root and t00r. So as you can see that's actually worked which is really good. Um, the last time I built some images on EVNG there was a lot more hassle involved in converting the image and making certain changes to permissions and it was just 
took many more steps, but this is really good. So that's it, EvenG is up and running. Um, we've tested a Linux image, which looks good. I'm planning to use this lab environment to build a lot of networking labs. Back when I was doing my CCNA and my CCMP, I used to use EvenG all the time and it's just a really good place to play around with new technology, different versions of firewalls and it's just a safe environment where you can just build and, and learn really. EvenG is not officially supported on Proxmox but it is simple to install so hopefully if you're looking to install it on Proxmox then this video will help. Again thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.